Hey friends, welcome back to my homestead on this dreary, rainy day. No matter. As promised, today I am kicking off my canning season and I am so excited. I'm waiting all year for this. So, to start it, let's start it with a bang. And by bang, I mean let me share one of my family's absolute favorite meal in jars, which is creamy chicken pot pie. That's right, I said creamy in the jar, chicken pot pie. So definitely grab yourself a pen and paper, get your favorite beverage and hop in a comfy chair and I'll meet you right back here. Not gonna wanna miss this recipe. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Sean Murray, you cannot add thickening agents like flour and cornstarch to canning. It's, it's not safe, and you're absolutely right. But you can add this, clear gel. It's normally used for pies for the most part, but you can also use this to thicken up your canning dishes and it makes a wonderful gravy. All it does is eliminate the step when you go to consume the product, you don't have to thicken it. It's already thick and ready to go and I like it this way. Now, the reason that you can use this safely, which you do for apple pie filling when you're canning it, um, is once again, by using clear gel, this stays very fluid and very liquidy through the processing process, if you will. And it doesn't gel up until after it's done processing as it starts to cool. So because it stays fluid and liquidy, that ensures that the core temperature in each of our jar will reach the temperature it needs to be for the consistent amount of time that it needs to be processed for. This is safe to do it, and that's what we're gonna do. Before we begin making this scrumptious, delicious meal in a jar, I just wanna let you all know that the exact measurements for this canning recipe is located on my blog and I will leave the link in the description so you can print it off and use it whenever you want. I'm actually using my water bath canner to put all of this chicken in and I'm just going to boil it. Okay, my chicken is done and as you can see, it's a lot of that like white in there and it's even on the chicken. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, so what I like to do is actually take my chicken out one by one because we're reserving this broth, remember? So I'm gonna take my chicken out one by one and I'm actually going to rinse it in the sink because I wanna get that white off of there. Now, just to show you what I mean, you can see all of that white on there and that is not anything I like. So I actually rinse my chicken off and and I do it with hot water. Okay, my chicken has been rinsed off and now I'm just going to leave it be and let it cool so that I can chop it up. Looks much better. I mean, there still is a little bit on there, but it's not like it was. And I just cubed up my chicken. I like to leave my chunks big. They're about inch and a half, two inches. Um, I don't like tiny little pieces of the chicken meat. I want to keep them substantial to go into my jars, um, especially when I go to eat them. And I know Scott prefers to have a substantial piece of chicken over, you know, a small tiny one as well, especially pressure canning. Um, I feel like the bigger the pieces, the, the better they hold their shape and texture. So this is ready to go as well. Now I am just going to take the broth that we cooked the chicken in and I am going to run it through a fine mesh sieve that will also help to take all of those white particles um, that you can see on the bottom of the pan there as well as in the water out of that stock um, because that's not something that I want to add to my food and as you can see it really removed quite a bit. A little tip I want to give you before we start is I am opening a case of jars and I want to show you how I do it. I actually leave the plastic around the cardboard and I just remove it from the top. I 
this. And I do this because leaving the plastic around the box like this just helps give it more stability, keeping the box together. Um, so I can store my jars in here, but that's just the way that I like to do it when I open a new case. I'm gonna get my jars washed up. So today I'm gonna be using my quart size ball wide mouths. And I'm gonna use the wide mouth because when it comes time to eat this yummy delicious concoction going in this jar this just makes it easier to get it out so if you have the wide mouth this is an ideal recipe for those but if you don't and you only have standard it's going to work the same as well so let's get these in the sink and cleaned up and ready to use i'm just using some dawn um, liquid actually the spray and i am going to just give these jars a nice quick wash using some very hot water um, they are new jars they've never been used before so i just want to make sure they're free of any debris or dust um, the usda says that if you are processing anything longer than 10 minutes you do not need to sterilize them anymore so this wash is going to be just fine and also don't forget you need to wash and clean those lids and those rings as well you want to make sure that your jars are perfectly ready to start this pressure canning process and a good wash of all equipment ensures that we are ready to go here is another tip um, whenever i'm canning potatoes I like to actually soak my potatoes and rinse them, and I like to do it two or three different times. The water is always cool, and I always use the Ball Fruit Fresh Produce Protector, but you could even just use like lemon juice. You get it in there, let it stir up a little bit, and that keeps our potatoes from yellowing and turning brown and discolored and just not looking very pretty in my jars. So remember, you eat with your eyes first. It needs to look appetizing, and these are all steps that just help with that. Rinsing the chicken helps with that. Keeping my potatoes nice and white, using this water helps with that. It's a personal preference, not a necessity, but it's what I suggest. Now, I know a lot of people that can and preserve leave the skins on, but I actually prefer to take them off for a couple reasons. One, I really don't care for the skin on potatoes um, when I'm cooking them this way. But the most important reason is by removing the skin, it shows you the blemishes such as this that you will find on your potatoes or this big one on the end. And you wanna remove all of that from your food before you can it. Now, as you can see here, I am actually just going to dump out my potatoes. This is the first rinse that I put them through. And I do this mostly to remove the starch from the potatoes. It doesn't make so much of a difference when I am canning something that's going to be creamy, but leaving the starch in does a couple of things. It adds an extra thickener, which I don't necessarily want. And it also makes the jars cloudy, especially if you're just doing potatoes alone and you don't do this rinsing process. It will turn the water that you can your potatoes in very cloudy. And I personally don't like that. This is a step that I just prefer to do. It's not one that has to be done, but I actually like it a whole lot better. And I will rinse them probably two to three times letting them soak and stirring them up in between um, to help get all of that extra starch that I don't want to include in my jars out of there. Oh, my sweet sleepy baby. Stay sleeping so Nana can finish. We are going to start with our butter in the saucepan. We're going to start by adding some um, unsalted butter, some pre-cut celery, and some 
onion. And we're going to let that cook up until the onions become translucent and the celery is softened. Mm, it smells so good. I love doing all of my prep work ahead of time as much as you possibly can. Um, it just makes it easier on canning day to have everything ready to go and helps keep my kitchen a little bit cleaner on what is generally a messy day. Okay, our onions and celery have cooked down. We're going to add some carrots, frozen corn, We are going to add some salt, and I'm just using my Redmond's Real Salt, black pepper, some thyme, garlic powder, and we're going to get at least eight cups of our reserved broth into this. Also going to add my chicken. I like to use my my shovel. I call it. All right. That is stir. These potatoes in there. We go. It's just so pretty. Again, adjust your liquids as you need it. Probably gonna add even a little bit more. While my pot pie is on the stove coming to a boil, I'm going to get my jars ready. What I am doing is adding some seriously hot water to them. Uh, my tap water will literally take the flesh off your bones. So I am filling my jars with hot water and I'm going to let them sit in the sink until I'm ready to use. This is an important step because the jar temperature must be the same as the temperature of the contents you're adding into the jars or you risk the jars bursting. So it is boiling and now we are going to add the clear gel. And basically what I like to do is just make a little slurry. You can add broth or water to it. Doesn't matter. Just keeps it from um, getting yucky in the pan. I'm gonna stir it and see how the thickness goes. You can add more if needed, or you can thin out with your broth if you need to as well. So just judge it by how much you feel. Let's actually bring this over a little bit. And when we do this, we want to leave a one inch headspace. So I'm going to leave all of the rings of the jar free. I will only put it up to the rings because that's roughly the um, one inch headspace mark. All right, ended up getting um, nine quarts and now it's time to debubble. Oh. 
that one went down a little, so I would add a little bit more. Some of my jars went down when I debubbled them. So all I'm going to do is just add a little bit more, um, like to this jar, this jar, and maybe that one on the end. And they look pretty good to me. And now I'm just going to take my rag with vinegar on it and I am going to clean the rims really good. Make sure there's no pie on that anywhere. You want to make sure that you clean those rims with the white vinegar really good to remove any type of particles that might be stuck on the top or around the outside where the rings tighten on to. If you skip this step, you risk your jars not getting a proper seal and therefore spoiling. So don't skip this step. Now we're going to take our hot clean lids that on there. Even though they're new, I inspect my lids each time before use. I want to make sure that the, the ring is in great condition and it's nice and spongy. It still has good meat on it. Sometimes even new ones can have a flaw. So always get in the habit of that. We can get our rings on, finger tight. Perfect. Look at how beautiful those jars look. Nine quarts of delicious, creamy chicken pot pie ready to go. Oh, it smells so good. I'm so excited. Let's get these in the canner. I could probably get six of them in there, but because I have to do two batches anyways, I'm just gonna do five. Now I am going to put the lid back on this. I'm gonna leave the weight off and I am going to let it come to pressure in a nice steady vent inside. All right, you can see that steady stream coming out. That is what I wanna see. I am now going to start my timer for 10 minutes. Let this uh, really build up in there, and then I'm gonna put my weight on. All right, it's been going for 10 minutes. It even pushed the little nipple up, sealing off the air. I'm gonna take my little Presto weight and pop that over there. And now I need to wait for that dial to get up to my PSI, which is 11. You need to know what your PSI is for proper safe um, pressure canning. And once it hits that 11 point mark on there, I'm gonna set my timer and we're gonna process these quarts for 90 minutes. Then I can do the next batch, <laughs> but easy peasy. Although I absolutely love the rain, I am not too fond of this nonsense while I'm waiting for the children's bus to come. <laughs> Ugh, what a good day to be a duck, yuck. Go, go, come on. Fire! Come on, dude. Hi, Nella. While my jars are processing, I'm going to take this time to write down any notes, 
that I want to add into my Keeper of the Home manual for this particular canning session. I really highly suggest writing down your recipes, the successes you've had, the failures you've had, what you used, how much. You will always have something to refer back to, which is super important when canning, especially if you're testing out recipes and you put together something that ends up being fabulous, like I did with this chicken pot pie. You want to record everything that you did so you have an easy reference to refer back to the next time you want to make them. And I can promise you, when you successfully can something delicious once, you will absolutely can it again. My timer went off. It's been 90 minutes. This is absolutely done processing. It never went below um, my PSI number, which was 11, and it didn't actually uh, uncontrollably go much higher either. It was very easy for me to regulate and control it this time around. So now what I am going to do is let this naturally release by itself. I'm not going to touch anything. I've shut the heat off. I've pulled it a little bit off of the burner, um, but I'm going to let it cool down on its own. I want my gauge to read zero. I want this little nipple vent right there. I want that to be down inside. That means there's no pressure left inside the pot and it's safe to remove the cover. Um, when I remove it, I always remove the cover away from me. So if anything's going to go wrong, it's not going to happen in my face. But it's just gonna take a little bit, not too, too long, but it does take a little bit for this to just get down to zero wait for everything to release off and it'll be good from there. Now carefully move the cover away. And there we have those beautiful jars. Um, gorgeous. Looks amazing. So you can see the difference. These have been processed. These are the next batch to go into process. But look at that amazing, beautiful color. And I love that there was no floating on the bottom. My food is all the way down. I am super happy with that i mean look at that they look gorgeous these are so yummy so now i'm just gonna let these cool um so i can check the seal make sure everything sealed properly get the rings off of them because we do not store them with our rings on we always take the rings off once they are done processing and sealed that will ensure that there won't be a false seal on your shelf um, because if you leave the rings on, it holds the lid down. You don't want the lid held in place. You want that lid to pop up if something's wrong. So that's why we always take those rings off. But I'm going to let these cool. I'm gonna get that in and we will be right back to wrap this kickoff to my canning season off and this is just delicious and amazing oh i cannot wait so good well my canning season has kicked off with a bang and i have nine gorgeous quarts of a creamy delicious chicken pot pie that i'm going to be adding to my pantry shelves um, you could do them in pints. If you did it in pints, I think you'd probably get about 16 pints. But here is the best part. So the ingredients to make this, um, all nine jars, came out to just under $41. If you divide that by the nine jars we have, that brings the cost for each meal to like $4.55. Now, if you made these in pints and you got the 16 pints out of them, that is actually going to bring your cost per jar to about $2.55. 
$2.55 for a ready-to-go meal that you really don't need to add much more to if you don't want to. This is a solid meal in a jar. Everything is there. This could be served with simple bread and butter or it would be delicious with a nice crusty baguette, some delicious homemade butter on that, sopping up all of that yummy, delicious gravy. Or for those nights when you are so busy, it's just insane. If you get a couple of those um, biscuits, the cans of biscuits you can pop open, just throw those biscuits in the oven, slice them in half, heat this up, serve it right on top. Oh, so good. And of course, you can always put it in a pie shell and have the traditional chicken pot pie. But the serving choices are endless with this, which is one thing that I truly love about that. Well, that and Scott and I can eat a jar for under $5, which with the rising cost of food and how insane everything is at the grocery stores right now, that makes me super happy, which is what canning is all about. It's not just about preserving and building up a stockpile. It's trying to save some money where we can to help us all out because times are tough right now. And that is a fabulous price for a very delicious meal. Well, my canning season has kicked off with a bang and I have nine gorgeous quarts of a creamy, delicious chicken pot pie that I'm going to be adding to my pantry shelves. Here is the best part. So the ingredients to make this, um, all nine jars, came out to just under $41. If you divide that by the nine jars we have, that brings the cost for each meal to like $4.55. If you made these in pints and you got the 16 pints out of them, that is actually going to bring your cost per jar to about $2.55. $2.55 for a ready to go meal that you really don't need to add much more to if you don't want to. This is a solid meal in a jar. Everything is there. This could be served with simple bread and butter or it would be delicious with a nice crusty baguette, some delicious homemade butter on that, sopping up all of that yummy, delicious gravy. Or for those nights when you are so busy, it's just insane. If you get a couple of those um, biscuits, the cans of biscuits you can pop open, just throw those biscuits in the oven, slice them in half. Heat this up, serve it right on top. Oh, so good. And of course, you can always put it in a pie shell and have the traditional chicken pot pie. But the serving choices are endless with this, which is one thing that I truly love about that. Well, that and Scott and I can eat a jar for under $5, which with the rising cost of food and how insane everything is at the grocery stores right now, that makes me super happy which is what canning is all about. It's not just about preserving and building up a stockpile. It's trying to save some money where we can to help us all out because times are tough right now. And that is a fabulous price for a very delicious meal. Well, I wanna thank you so much for stopping by my homestead. As we kicked off my canning season, I have been so excited for this to start and I am so happy that you are all here to kick it off with me. Trust me. This is a recipe you are going to want to keep on your shelves and you can tweak it to your family's needs. You could add peas, you could eliminate the potatoes. The possibilities are endless. Don't forget to make the slurry before you add that clear gel to the boiling pot. It makes all the difference, trust me. Um, I have all of my notes recorded in here, my yield, my recipe, Everything is down in my journal, so I will be able to refer to this if anything should go wrong or if down the road I want to tweak this recipe a little more. I know that it's a hit. This works. What else can we do to it? So thanks so much again for stopping by my homestead. If you're new here, my name is Sean Marie, and I'm a stay-at-home wife and nana that I am just trying to do my dondest to help raise these children in a more wholesome environment by much simpler standards with food that I can control. If you hit that bell, you will always be notified when I upload new content. You never know what it's going to be about, but no matter what it is, it is always about creating my handmade home 
one day at a time. Thank you so much for kicking off my canning season with me and I will see you next week with some more canning. I love this time of year. Canning is wonderful. Thanks again. I'll see you guys real soon.